Rick Lee from LG and we're here at CS 2015 and today we've unveiled the new G Flex 2 which has just taken the whole market by storm right now. A lot of excitement because obviously this is our second generation curved smartphone. Uh, really what's exciting about this is that it's been a long time really since there's been a lot of excitement around a smartphone because in this situation here it's for us a refreshing take on not only what a smartphone can do but what it looks like. Uh, right off the bat you're looking at a 1080p full HD screen using our OLED technology which is again bringing to life the full colors and the resolution plus it sort of sips on the energy requirements because it's paired with a 3000 milliamp battery which is important and we're taking advantage to be able to quick charge this so you can get up to 50% charges in 30 minutes it's really important what's really exciting is the fact that when you're using the camera uh, you know, there's been that phenomenon when it comes to selfies, obviously. So here we are in a situation taking a selfie using gesture shutter. I could just simply trigger the shutter by using uh, my hand. But now because the people are using this with their selfie sticks and such, you're seeing a, a distance of 1.5 meters. The, these are really good examples to understand the overall direction. Our philosophy isn't just simply to overwhelm the market with just new features, better, smaller, thinner, faster. It's looking at what consumers are doing. And so the G Flex 2 is important for us in that regard because what we're trying to do here is bring forth all the great learnings from the original G Flex, but also recently with the LG G3, all the great features of the camera, the OIS, the screen technology, bringing them here. This for us is our ability to have some fun. You know, what will a smartphone look like? This is one example for us. Now, you guys have incorporated features on the G3 like the laser autofocus system, 30 megapixel camera. Correct. The sensor is the same as the G3, right? The sensor is the same as G3, but what's changed is that, for example, um, a lot of these, the sensors and the module, we tweaked and modified. There are things that you'll never see, but for example, the distance between the IR filter and the actual image sensor has been modified to minimize glare. So when you have a uh, flare, sorry, with the sun. So we've, we, we, we found a lot of optimizations, whether it's software or in the hardware, these tweaks to bring in an added benefit and in increased performance. Now can you talk a little bit about the, uh, the scratch resistant back, which is a feature that the original G Flex had. I heard that you've improved that feature on the G Flex 2. Yes, I mean, it, when we first came out, people were excited. Uh, you're looking at a time where it took minutes for it to be repaired. You're looking at daily wear and tear, scuffs and little mars on the surface. But we worked with a uh, vendor and we found a, a improvement. Now you're looking at a situation where scratches or blemishes will go away almost within seconds. Uh, uh, in our test right now where we're putting uh, uh, some severe uh, abuse to it, you're looking at about 10 seconds for it to go away. So you guys haven't figured out one other problem though. And what's that? Fingerprint. Ah, uh, yes. On that glossy back. Well, we're definitely getting, but you saw what the improvements we brought with LG G3, and some of that technology has been brought across here. Um, because of the properties around the healing uh, material, we couldn't incorporate the same attributes that we have on the G3 right now. Now, can you talk a little bit about the internal? I heard this is the first phone that will be shipping with the Snapdragon 810, right? That's correct. Uh, I actually just met with Qualcomm a few minutes ago. Very exciting situation right now. We are most likely going to be the first to have the 64-bit octa-core processor driving the G3, uh, the... G Flex 2. The G Flex 2. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's exciting here is um, to fully take advantage of that chipset, We've also found ways to modify the architecture of our display, and as a result, that display chipset be able to work a, uh, in tandem and to really fully take advantage of the capabilities of the Snapdragon um, A10 series. Now, the other uh, interesting, exciting thing for me is that it's running Lollipop. Yes. So it's running the new, it's the LG uh, UI, similar to the G3 with the flat icons. Correct. But you're now running uh, Lollipop, and I think you'll be one of the first uh, third-party OEMs that have shipped devices Lollipop. Right. So can you talk right. a little bit about the improvements that Lollipop brings to the table? Right, and what's really great is, as you noted, uh, the LG G3 already had its own UI system that was very, um, uh, very subtle and already playing with the, the flat icons and the very similar to the material design that we see now with Lollipop. Uh, right off the bat, there's a lot more efficiency and just the, the, the integration 
of uh, the menus and floating uh, icons and floating maps. Those things are, there's, there's some similarities between the approach that we have taken in the past. So there's not a lot of disruption. We're, we're, we're really trying to stay in the background uh, and because already the philosophy is almost the same, uh, it, it's very difficult to see that line of distinction when it's the LG uh, UI versus the lollipop environment. So lollipop is going to give you know 64-bit capability. Oh yeah. And it also in, in bad, better battery life and other features. And the UI seems a lot even smoother than the G3. Right. Transitions and everything seem very Absolutely. very smooth. Absolutely. And in, in what when we talk about battery life, what's exciting about that is when you pair what Lollipop is offering in conjunction with the Qualcomm chipset, plus some of our, our own proprietary technology, not just with the battery itself, but in terms of our software and algorithms, you're really going to see this 3000 milliamp be really stretched out in the long run. So I guess you guys haven't announced uh, any pricing or availability yet, but is there even a quarter you can, is it Q1? We're looking at about um, starting a rollout in the Korean market, probably end of this month, early February, and then global rollouts right after. Um, announcements have been made by U.S. carriers and others uh, throughout the day of, uh, of their intent to carry. So probably early Q1, where you're going to see this rollout happen. Well, thanks so much for talking to us, Frank. My pleasure. Have a great rest of CES, and I'm looking forward to getting my hands on uh, in more depth with the uh, G Flex 2. Certainly a great looking device, very powerful, and uh, looks uh, like probably one of the most exciting phones at CES. Well, thank you. We feel the same way. <laughs>